What's going on everybody? Welcome to CS5 Gaming. Today I'm going to be showing you a short tutorial on how to make a Part 3 mask. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need a mask. Now I picked this up on eBay for a few dollars. Now if you're not too picky with the color, you can probably get it in a couple weeks. Okay, I'm removing the snaps right now. You, you can use a drill or as you can see I'm using a pair of pliers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sand the mask right now. I'm just using 120 grit, which is not very coarse, but it's going to do the job. For the pesky parts of the paint that you can't get off of the sandpaper, just use a little razor blade. Alright, now we're going to prime the mask. We're going to prime the outside and the inside. It should look something like this. Now after the primer is completely dried, I'm just going to spray a quick coat of almond paint on it. I'm just going to do the outside, I'm not going to do the inside of the mask. Okay, once it dries, I'm going to take the sandpaper again and just lightly sand off any of the rough edges. Plus, this is also going to put some very minor scratches into it, so it looks like there's some damage and wear. Alright, I'm going to grab a damp rag and a little mixture of color that I have. Now, this is yellow, brown, and a couple drips of black mixed with water. I'm going to place it onto the damp rag, kind of mix it up a little bit here, and then just rub it into the mask as hard as I can. This is going to get into the scratches and cover the entire mask. Once it dries, it should look like this. With the sandpaper, I'm now going to start applying the damage from what I see in the photo. Okay, so I don't have any decals right now, so I'm going to show you how to do it a cheap way. I'm just using red masking tape. Now this is actually quite inexpensive and you can get a thousand chevrons out of it. So using a razor blade, just cut out the chevron from the masking tape and apply it to the mask the best that you can. Smooth it out and it should look something like this. Okay, for the bottom chevrons, they're a little more difficult because they're a lot thinner. So once you do apply them, you may have to take them off, reapply them, or just make brand new ones. I actually ended up not liking the one that I had here, so I just made a couple new ones. Okay, now I'm going to take some really, really diluted black paint, and I'm going to apply it to some parts of the mask. I'm just going to continue to use the old rag that I have that already has the yellow and brown paint on it. So looking at the photo, I'm just going to apply the dark color to some of the areas. I'm mainly going to hit around the eyes and of the holes of the mask. Now this is going to make the mask look kind of old and aged, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Now I'm going to apply the dark paint to some of the damage because this is going to bring it out and it's going to emphasize it a little bit more and it's really going to be a lot more noticeable. Okay, so that's actually looking pretty good and I feel comfortable enough to apply some clear coat to this. Alright, so we're now going to apply some clear coat. I'm going to let it dry for about an hour or so and then I'm going to apply another coat. Okay, we're going to be making our own custom straps. So right now you can kind of see the materials that are needed. We have the snaps and buttons, strapping material, scissors, a measuring tape, and of course the mask. Just measure out the straps the best that you can. Uh, I'm typically going about 14 to 15 inches for the one that goes around the back of the head. And around 13 inches or so for the one that goes over the top of the head. Now this is going to vary depending on how you want your straps to be. Okay, these are a couple of the tools that come with the actual button and snap kit. I'll just have a diagram put on the screen here. I'm not going to go into great detail because it actually be kind of hard to explain. So uh, once you do buy the button kit, it actually has the instructions on it and it's really, really easy to use. As you can see here, I got the buttons placed on the mask already. And you know what? They actually fit really, really nice. I like this kit and it's only about five bucks. Now we're going to put the snaps on the straps right now. Now again, this is relatively self-explanatory and the instructions will explain everything. Okay, now for the strap that goes over the top of the head, you can kind of see here I got one end folded. It's about a couple of inches in, which is a good measurement. I'm going to be using a hot glue gun to actually seal the end up. Now once the glue is actually dry, you can feed the bottom strap through the loop and then attach it to the mask. And there you go. That's actually looking pretty good, I think. Let's see what my man Jason thinks. Alright, that's actually looking pretty sharp. Let me put the photo up next to my man Jason here, and we can see a comparison on how close I actually got this mask to looking like the one in the movies. 
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd love to make it for you. If you want to see some more mask videos, let me know in the comments below. All right, this is CS5 signing out, and I hope to see you in the next video.